many tried and true American institutions wouldn't exist if not for the grit and ambition of immigrants, including Rhode Island's Narragansett Beer, founded in 1890. Six German immigrants came over here and they wanted to uh, brew beer that was reminiscent of home. The German style lager was a novelty for Americans used to traditional ales. That was really their point of differentiation. Narragansett's popularity surged. The brewery managed through prohibition in the 1920s through sheer ingenuity, says CEO Mark Hellendrung. They survived prohibition selling ice. In 1944, Narragansett became the first beer company to sponsor the Boston Red Sox. By the 50s, legendary Red Sox radio broadcaster Kurt Gowdy introduced the beer's famous jingle. Hi, neighbor. Narragansett grew steadily and in 1965 was acquired by the Falstaff Brewing Corporation of St. Louis. Production eventually moved out of Rhode Island. Financial issues followed, Helen Drung says, and the brand faltered. But in 2005, a new era for Narragansett. Helen Drung, a Rhode Island native, felt inspired to buy the brand after asking a bartender for a beer recommendation. And this, this older guy, sitting in the corner said, give the kid a Gansett. It was just amazing. Next thing you know, I, I remembered it, but didn't know it was still around. And next thing you know, the whole bar is talking about John English and Kirk Gowdy and Red Sox baseball. And I was like, man, this, this, uh, this shouldn't be dead. Helen Drung recruited a team of investors. And in the spring of 2021, the new owners opened a new Narragansett brewery serving beer and bites on the Providence waterfront. Lee Lord is the head brewer and is expanding the line. We experiment across the gamut, paying respect to the older styles and the older traditions of brewing while implementing brand new technologies and the science behind it that's advanced so much since brewing began. Rumor has it you like uh, West Coast IPAs. I do like a West Coast IPA. You get a little uh, bitterness, piney taste. Oh, I like that. That is delicious. Yeah, that's the kind of IPA I like. Yeah. Not too not too heavy, not too sweet. That's really nice. Yeah. Joe O'Neill is Narragansett's Rhode Island sales manager. He's been selling Gansett for more than 40 years. There's a genuine feeling about Narragansett beer in Rhode Island. There was an old question years ago, uh, who's bigger, Narragansett Brewery or the phone company? You know, they, they were like a public utility. Helen Drung says Narragansett nostalgia is one of the reasons the beer's comeback achieved success. You tapped into it, but Narragansett. it was more like younger people remembering their grandfathers than it was the grandfathers actually drinking Narragansett again, which in a way is kind of cool. Boston's North End is famous for food, feasts, and neighborhood fixtures. We're here every night around 5 to about 7 o'clock. We meet, there's like four or five guys that we eat here every night. This unofficial coffee club's home base is Cafe Vittoria. The friends say they come for the cappuccino, but stay for the old school charm. Just the people, the waitresses, everybody, very nice people here. The Vittoria hasn't changed much since opening on Hanover Street nearly a century ago in 1929, says general manager Armando Reyes. He's been a fixture here since immigrating to the U.S. from El Salvador in 1987. I like the, the atmosphere here, the people, warm people. Everybody was nice to me from the beginning. And I always liked this place because it was always crowded, busy. Reyes started as a busboy and worked his way up to filling cannoli and eventually running the whole operation. When I started, I used to have um, black hair. I used to be a skinny. <laughs> Look what happened. <laughs> he says the secret to Victoria's longevity is consistency. We just got to keep doing what we're doing. That's what we do the best. In addition to Italian cafe staples, including tiramisu and espresso, the Vittoria also serves up a new bestseller that was not part of the original menu. Now, we make the best espresso martinis. Reyes says that trendy menu edition reflects the changing tastes of the North End neighborhood, but the cafe itself is a reminder of the old world.
that's what the, most of the people say. They say they, they like if they go back in time or they walk in into one of those uh, old cafes in, in Europe. And one thing in common, we all love coffee. Armando Reyes was only 17 when he arrived to the United States and he's never worked anywhere else. He credits the cafe's owners, the Riccio family, with teaching him everything from coffee to customer service. And back to Narragansett, part of how it survived prohibition was by brewing porter. Porter remained legal because of its high iron content and, quote, medicinal benefits. Up next, speaking of prohibition.